Welcome to Washington Park United Church of Christ. Um, I'm Lee Berg, the one-legged minister, uh, at least for another five, five weeks. Uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. But um, we will get through this. I want to uh, welcome those of you who are online, uh, who have joined with us today. We're glad you're here. We will focus our thoughts this morning on sharing our stories. And so, during the service, if the, the sermon gets too long, be sure and think in terms of what is your story. And if someone asks you to tell you about why you show up here on Sundays, or why you're a part of this community of faith, how would you answer? What's your story? We're going to talk about the power of sharing our stories today. We continue to be a nation that is, is racked by not the unintended consequences, but the reality of the consequences of how we respond to a perceived right for anybody 18 or over to be able to walk in a store and walk out with an AR-15 or some other version of a weapon of war. It is an addiction in this country that is justified by a misreading of the Second Amendment. And people are dying because of it. People are being shot when they ring the wrong doorbell or when they pull in the wrong driveway. God help us. God help us to get through this. And we will. There is, no matter how cold the winter may be, and yes, none of us really enjoyed the snow this weekend, other than thinking about the moisture of it. <laughs> Louise loved it. it uh, we are people of hope because we know that spring always follows the depth of winter. Uh, so let's begin with a moment of silence and um, let's continue to pray for the people of Ukraine and all who are impacted by the war there, for the people of Sudan and other places around the world where war seems to dominate the headlines. And on this Earth Day weekend, let's continue to pray that we will be people who hear and listen and work to bring about justice, to bring about healing for our earth, to be advocates for the things that make for creation, that make for sustaining that which God has given us. May we pray. May we always be people of hope, people who know the power of transformation, people who know the power of resurrection. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Please join me in the call to celebration in your bulletin. We depend on those around us. We depend on you, O oh God. Those who support us and provide wisdom and guidance. Tell of your wisdom, O oh Christ. The species whose life sustains our own. Teach us of our interdependence, O oh Holy Spirit. 
May we this day recognize our place among all whom you have created. Show us your love through the beauty of your creation. Now I invite you to rise as you're willing and able for our opening song, God of the Sparrow, God of the Whale, which imagines that every creature might have a story to tell. Um, we don't sing this often, so Amy will play through the tune. Uh, it's a simple tune, but we'll hear the entire tune and then we'll start singing. First reading, I'm going to set up what's happening here. A few years ago, Alison Sautel and I wrote this dialogue where we imagined Thomas from last week's scripture story, sometimes called Doubting Thomas, and Cleopas from the Road to Emmaus story, comparing their stories. On this day where we're talking about sharing our stories, I thought this would be a good fit. Thomas, my friend, how are you? Cleopas, my friend, I have had the most confusing thing happen. You too? Wait, what happened to you? Well, last week, a friend and I were walking along the road to Emmaus talking about everything that's happened lately, and the stranger came up to us, up beside us on the road, and listened to our discussion. He asked questions about what's happened lately. As if anyone in the area hasn't heard about the crucifixion of Jesus the Nazarene. Right. But he acted as if it was all news to him and asked a lot of questions. So we told him about Jesus, about his healing and teaching, and how much we hoped he'd be the one to deliver us, from deliver Israel from the Romans. We told him that instead he was arrested and crucified by the Roman Empire. And who hasn't heard about that? The Romans crucify a lot of people, but this one was a big deal. But here's the funny thing. We told him how that very morning, some women went to the tomb and found it empty. They came back to us with a story of seeing angels who said he was still alive. So a few of us went to the tomb and looked, and it was just like the women said. I know. Why didn't we believe them in the first place? Go figure. So then this man interrupted us and called us slow and foolish. He told us how prophets from the beginning, starting with the books of Moses, have pointed to him. And while he was speaking about the scriptures, our hearts were burning within us. Are you sure it wasn't indigestion? <laughs> Finally, we sat down and broke bread together. 
And as he blessed the bread and broke it, we recognized him. It was Jesus. But just as we recognized him, he vanished. Wait a second. They're starting to call me Doubting Thomas because I wanted evidence before I would believe Jesus was resurrected. But at least I recognized him when he was standing in front of me. <laughs> really? How did that happen? Well, you all were gathered in a locked house. I was hiding away. I was afraid the same leaders who arrested Jesus would come back for us. So people were telling me they saw Jesus appear to them, but I didn't believe them. Who knows how much wine they were drinking? Hey, give us a break. We were grieving. I was grieving too, and I didn't want to get my hopes up in vain. So I said I wouldn't believe unless I saw the nail holes in his hands and stuck my hand in his side. You. But I understand how that would convince you. So when I was back among them eight days later, he appeared again. This time, he seemed to know exactly what I had said, and he invited me to do the things I said I would need to believe. That is strange, too. What does it mean? One thing I know for sure, it was surprising. <laughs> what I really want to know is, what do we do now? Our second reading is a poem by Naomi Shihab Nye. The story around the corner is not turning the way you thought. It would turn gently in a little spiral loop the way a child draws the tail of a pig. What came out of your mouth, a riff of common talk, as a sudden weather shift on a beach, sky looming mountains of cloud in a way you cannot predict or guide. The story shuffles elements, darkens, takes its own side. And it is strange far more complicated than a few phrases pieced together around a kitchen table on a July morning in Dallas, say, a city you don't live in, where people might shop forever or throw a thousand stories away. You who carried or told a tiny bit of it aren't sure. Is this what we wanted? Stories wandering out, having their own lives free? Maybe they are planning something bad. A scrap or cell of talk you barely remember is growing into a weird body with many demands. One day soon it will stumble up the walk and knock, knock hard, and you will have to answer the door. Living God, touch our hearts through these words and through your spirit kindle our imaginations breathe your life into our actions as we dream and work to shape your new world our new multi-purpose guitar stand holder works great with crutches how are you doing today? Beautiful weather out. For those of you online, I hope it's beautiful weather where you are. It certainly is here. I want to give a shout out to, uh, to Peter Sautel. Not that he likes these shout outs. But yesterday was the inaugural event of a UCC denomination-wide Earth Day Summit. And it was full of stories about what's possible. Earth Day stories of hope. Jim Antal, who spoke at our Congregations Alive event, not back in February, I think it was, was speaking, and he's a powerful speaker, and he wanted to acknowledge that the work that the UCC has done around climate justice, creation justice, caring for the earth, has heroes and heroines 
And one of those heroes is our own Peter Sautel, and he was affirmed in that event yesterday. I um, enjoyed it. I really enjoyed listening to the stories of young people in their late 20s, maybe early 30s. Now, when I was there, I thought I was pretty old. Boy, was I wrong. But anyway, uh, one stood out to me, and her name was uh, Gina Peltier, Native American, Minnesota. And what stood out to me about her was not only her activism, and she is a community organizer, but her understanding that anything that is made into plastic, and plastic comes from oil primarily, can be made with hemp. Think about all the plastic in our automobiles. There it is, a hemp purse Beth McCoy is, is raising, right? Thank you, Beth. And that got me to thinking, not only is it good to use hemp in a way that is earth friendly, but as you're growing hemp, it absorbs massive amounts of carbon dioxide. And I thought that was, was pretty cool. So every year on Earth Day, there will be an annual celebration, stories of hope, stories of people making a difference, stories for those of us who may um, have a year or two uh, on these young people, or a decade or two or three, stories that remind us that there are people coming after us who are committed to earth care. In preparing for today, I, I was looking for people who had thought about the power of story. What we heard between uh, Allison and Eric, between Cleopas and Thomas, were two individuals telling their stories, stories that changed them. As we talked about last week, Thomas is believed to be the origin of the spread of Christianity to India. And allegedly there he was killed by a spear, executed by a spear, which is interesting, considering how he wanted to see where the spear had been thrust in the side of Jesus before he would believe. So, some of you may know about Edward Osborne Wilson, a noted biologist, born and raised in Alabama, um, fascinated by all things natural and nature, grew up a Southern Baptist and went to school at the University of Alabama to get his undergrad and his master's, and then he went to Harvard and then he taught there for the rest of his professional life. He is generally recognized as one of the leading scientists to have walked through this world. He is also recognized as one of the foremost naturalists in both science and literature, as well as synthesizer in work stretching from pure biology across the social sciences and humanities. He is acknowledged as the creator of two scientific disciplines, island biogeography and sociobiology, three unifying concepts of science and the humanities jointly, biophilia, biodiversity studies, and consilience, and one major technological advance in the study of global biodiversity. He died two years ago at the age of 92. His last book was called Genesis. His next to last book was called Half Earth, A Path for Saying, Saving the Earth. 
Simply put, and it has to be simple for me to grasp it, but simply put, his half-earth theory was if the countries around the globe would commit to allowing parts of their country to remain wild and undeveloped, including the oceans, unfished, that the earth would save itself and most of the species that are dying at an unbelievable rate. What I found interesting about Wilson, in addition to his being called the Charles Darwin of his day, was his understanding of story. A couple of his students pointed out that Wilson proposed teaching science through the power of story. As he explained in one of his first articles, the universal love of stories is not a coincidence. Our brains function by constructing narratives. Adults and children alike live, learn, and relate to others through stories. Now, due to a fishing accident where he lost his right eye because he got finned by a fish he pulled out of the water, he got interested in studying that which he could observe, and he was initially known for his study of ants and his study of how they organize as social communities. And then he said, the best way that we can convey the truth of science is through story. He pointed out that the ants also constitute a fascinating narrative, which can be the key to helping the non-scientists understand the great ideas of science. We all live by narrative. Every day and every minute of our lives, narrative is the human way of working through a chaotic and unforgiving world. The narrative gene, uh, genius of Homo sapiens is an accommodation to the inherent inability of the three pounds of our sensory system and brain to process more than a minute fraction of the information the environment pours into us. In order to keep the organism alive, that fraction must be intensely and accurately selective. The stories we tell ourselves and others are our survival manuals. Wow. Think about that. Think about that. The power of story. What stories have shaped your life? Have you thought about it? Some of us are born storytellers, and we do it not because we think about it, we do it because our brains just work that way. And, you know, Sydney is constantly saying, land the plane, stop the story. Well, it's hard. <laughs> you know, it's, it's almost as if I think I get paid by the word. Cleopas and Thomas were sharing a story. And it's a story that really had turned their world upside down. Most of us have walked through the valley of the shadow, the loss of a loved one, the loss of a job, the uncertainty of war, of drafts, the pain that we share when we see our world, when we see our country almost at war with itself. Dark times, hard times. I mean, the followers of Jesus weren't very, well, those who were followers of Jesus, however many of them were in Jerusalem at the time of his crucifixion, were nowhere to be found as Jesus hung on the cross. His mother, 
Mary Magdalene, the disciple whom Jesus loved, who we think to be John, a son of Zebedee, they were there. But I think the others were not all that far away because they were watching what was happening, hiding their faces, not wanting to be mistaken for being a follower of Jesus. Certainly that was Peter's position. Dark night of the soul is what St. John the Divine mystic from the 13th century called it. We have lived through dark nights of the soul. We know what it is to walk through the darkness. And what I want to affirm for us is just like there was more to the story for Cleopas and for Thomas, there's more to our story. No matter how dark the story may be, there's more yet to come, more yet to be written, more yet to be thought about, more yet to be shared. I want my grandkids to know about their grandparents and their great-grandparents. I want them to know about life experienced by their great-grandparents and their grandparents as well. The problem is they're 8 and 12 and now 15 and not very interested in those stories. But as Wilson points out, it's the narratives of our lives, it's the narratives of how we have lived life that really do connect us to one another. The story around the corner is an affirmation that there's more to come. Now, this poem is, is not uplifting and encouraging as much as it is a realistic description of what is about to happen. There's about to be more to our stories. There's going to be unexpected diagnoses. There's going to be hardship, change, the loss of those we love, maybe a confrontation with our own humanity and our own limitations. The story around the corner. Is it a story that is going to be written from the pages of hope, or is it a story that we're going to write from the pages of despair? I opt for hope. I opt for hope. And the hope for which I opt is driven by science. Why do we love spring so much? The older we get, my theory is, it keeps reminding us that we can get through whatever the next winter may be. There's more to come. That's why I enjoy it. So what's your story? What is it that, and I thought I'd turn the volume off of that thing. What is your story that's just around the corner? Grandchildren? Yeah. Accomplishments of those you love. You see, sometimes we focus not on the possibilities, but we focus on the loss. We focus on the pain. And that's only natural. Now, what I find interesting in the story of Cleopas and Thomas is Thomas, for all his recognizing Jesus with the wounds and all of that gory stuff, walked with him 
probably for what was at least an hour, maybe longer, or at least with his spirit. And he and Cleopas don't recognize Jesus until they sit down to break bread together and in the breaking of bread and the offering of thanks, they go, wow, he really is alive. That was their story that was around the corner that they didn't anticipate in the darkness of crucifixion. But it was the story of resurrection. Washington Park UCC has been writing a story for 97 years. And we will eventually get to that 100-year anniversary, God willing. Because we're having conversations that are difficult conversations about next chapters. We can trip over the idea that even having the conversations is writing an end to the story. And that's not what I'm hearing and not what I'm seeing. Ed ministry and others continue to have these conversations about what comes next. And Bev Rexroad made it real simple for those of us who need it to be real simple. And she has the congregation. And then in this diagram was this one statement, a commitment to stay together as a congregation. And then out of that commitment to stay together as a congregation comes other options, other opportunities, comes other chapters of Wash Park's story. I've been thrilled to see people get excited about planning a summer of connections, a summer of blessing of the animals, Janine, do you remember when we blessed the animals at Parker? Cherry Creek Park, I think it was. It was a whole lot of fun, and most of the animals behaved, right, Robin? Look <laughs> at most of them. That's going to be fun whenever we do it. Opportunities for us to share our stories opportunities for us to get together for happy hour, real ones. You know, thank God it's Friday, TGIFs. And we're going to have fun being a faith community together as we continue to talk about what comes next. Yeah, we wish we could draw it nice and easily and symmetrically like the curl of the tail on the pig. Eh, not going to happen like that. But we don't know how it's going to happen. But there's a story yet to be written. There's more yet to be done. There's more work to be done in the name of climate justice and saving the planet. There's more to the story. God, give us strength and energy and hope to help write that story. May we pray. God, if we can learn science by the power of narrative and story, if we can be encouraged with hope for our planet and hope for creation and hope for species by the sharing of story, may we see the power of our stories in helping us to shape the future of Wash Park's story. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Why don't we stand for this song as we're willing and able? This is an old hymn tune with new words by John Bell from the Iona community. New as in 20th century words. And it 
deals with many experiences and circumstances in which the experience of Christ arising might show up. Christ has risen while earth slumbers. Christ has risen where hope died. As he said and as he promised, as we doubted and denied, let the moon embrace the blessing. Let the sun sustain the cheer. Let the world confirm the rumor, Christ is risen, God is here. Christ has risen to companion, former friends who fear the night, sensing loss and limitation, where their faith had once burned bright. They bemoan what is no longer, they expect no hopeful sign, till Christ ends their conversation, breaking bread and sharing wine. Christ has risen and forever lives to challenge and to change, all whose lives are messed or mangled, all who find religion strange. Christ is risen, Christ is present, making us what Christ has been, evidence of transformation in which God is known and seen. We come now to a time of offering, and uh, the offering plate is at the back. If, you have, uh, if you're here and you have uh, something you want to leave as your offering or pledge, please do so. If you're online, you can go to the Donate Now page on our website. Uh, also, if you are uh, facing hardship, uh, let us know and we'll do what we can to help you connect with resources that can help you get through uh, the hardship. You are called to tell the story, passing words of life along. Then to blend your voice with others as you sing the sacred song. Christ be known in all our singing, filling all with songs of love. You are called to teach the rhythm of the dance that never ends. Then to move within the circle, hand in hand with strangers, friends. Christ be known in all our dancing, touching all with hands of love. You are called to set the table, blessing bread as Jesus blessed. Then to come with thirst and hunger, needing care like all the rest. Christ be known in all our sharing, feeding all with signs of love. May the one whose love is broader than the measure of all space Give us words to sing the story, move among us in this place Christ be known in all our living, filling all with gifts of love
Spirit of resurrection, you come to us on our many journeys. Accompany us and change our lives. May our gifts reflect the love that has touched us and nurture community that touches others on their journeys towards wholeness and peace. Amen. Now I invite you once more to rise as you're willing and able, and we will again sing this song we began ending with last week, God is Still Speaking, by our friend, Reverend Tom Emanuel. I intend us to keep singing this until we know it. <laughs> I think the words are really fitting for the UCC and for where we are. speaking in this place let us serve one another and embrace every child is God's beloved find Christ in every face oh God is still speaking God is still speaking God is still speaking in this place in the glory of a sunrise in the stars up in sky in the still small voice that calls to you and beckons you to fly God is still speaking in this place let us serve one another and embrace every child is God's beloved find Christ in every face oh God is still speaking God is still speaking, God is still speaking in this place. In the midst of new dimensions, in the face of the unknown, in the space between what's yet to be and the faith we've always known. God is still speaking in this place. Let us serve one another and embrace. Every child is God's beloved. Find Christ in every face. Oh, God is still speaking. God is still speaking. God is still speaking in this place. In the passion of a lover, in the shelter of a friend in the fight for justice rolling down and a love that never ends god is still speaking in this place let us serve one another and embrace every child is god's beloved Find Christ in every face, oh, God is still speaking, God is still speaking, God is still speaking in this place. May the God of hope, the God of love, the spirit of peace walk with you today and throughout this week. For it's in Christ's name we pray, amen.